at Stories with Rosie again. Lovely to see you. I hope you're all doing well and not getting too stressed in these crazy lockdown times. But we can always snuggle up and have a story, can't we? So I'm going to read to you today Quentin Blake's A Sailing Boat in the Sky, which would be kind of nice about now sometimes. So it's good to use our imaginations and think where we can go and what we can do. Okay, so let's dive in. Also, don't forget, please send me your stories, any pictures you want me to show, and I'd love to read them out. Okay. A sailing boat in the sky. Isabel and Nicholas were walking along the beach, chatting about nothing in particular. It was just an ordinary day, that is, until they reached the top of the dune. Look, Nick, said Isabel, it's a boat. It's all broken up. What do you think? Shall we try to put it back together again? The parts of the boat were all there and Isabel and Nicholas set about trying to piece them together. These wheels seem to fit on the side, said Nicholas. It's a very funny sort of boat. They climbed in. The wind blew and the old sails filled. Slowly, the boat began to roll along the beach. Strange looking bird on the port bow, shouted Isabel. Nothing strange about me, said the bird. I'm just a stork and my name is Simona. But I've been shot in the wing and I can't fly. Just then, the wind blew harder and the boat picked up speed. Quick, Isabel! Quick, said Isabel, get in! They just managed to catch hold of Simona as the boat rolled along faster and faster and took off into the sky. They found themselves in the middle of a flock of birds who all looked very like Simona. The biggest of the storks flew alongside them. My name's Gus, he said. Now that you've rescued our Simona, what about helping others? I can see plenty of people who need saving from up here. What about it? said Nicholas. Nicholas said to Isabel. Why not? she replied. Let's go. They sailed on, beach after beach, and then suddenly below them they saw a girl running away from a group of children who were throwing stones at her and calling her names said Simona before they hit her on the wing. The stones bounced off the boat as Isabel and Nicholas helped the girl on board. Her name was Eloise. Why do they want to hurt me? She sobbed. I haven't done anything wrong. On and on they flew until they came across a troubling sight. A group of men were hacking away at rocks with pickaxes and amongst them were several small boys trying to do the same. One of them was so weak he could not even stand. As they flew over, Isabel and Nicholas just managed to grab the boy by the hands before the boat moved off. Their new friend was called Rashid. He had a ragged scarf around his neck, which El Eloise used to wipe the sweat from his forehead as they sailed on through the sky. But then, oh no, said Isabel, what's this horrible dark cloud in front of us? They were over a town where everything smoked, the houses, the factories, the cars, and even the people. Soon, everyone in the boat was coughing <coughs> and holding their noses. It may be bad for us, said Isabel, but look, look at that poor boy down there. He can't breathe at all. Hold on, said Gus, let me try to help him. And off he went. The boy was called Eric. And he was so happy to be able to breathe again. They all felt much better as they sailed peacefully through the sky, the bright, clear sky. But what's that 
that noise? said Nicholas. Is it come some kind of storm? It wasn't a storm. It was warplanes, rockets and deafening explosions. They were in a war zone. Quick, we've got to get out of here, cried Isabel. But wait, she said. We must try and save that woman and her baby. The woman told them that her name was Magda and that her baby was called Lyra. All hands were needed to help them safely aboard, but they were not safe yet. There were holes in the boat, the sails were torn and there were so many people on board that it was sinking lower and lower in the sky. Oh, we must find somewhere to land soon, said Nicholas, but where? At last they came to another beach. How about there? suggested Gus. We can't land there. Look at that awful woman with the green face. Do you think she's a witch? Don't be silly, said Eloise. There's nothing to be afraid of. She's my granny and she sells fish on the beach. Everyone thinks she's lovely. all busied themselves taking the boat to pieces. Upside down the hull made a shelter where Magda and Lyra could rest. Isabel and Eric hung up the sails to make a hammock. Nicholas turned one of the sails into a sort of washing line and Simona and Gus used the other for a nest. Rashid collected wood for the fire and Eloise helped her granny with the cooking. The fish soup that night was very good. Eloise's granny had added a few special ingredients, including a flying fish to help Simona's wing get better quickly. Oh, it would be lovely if you could all stay here with me a bit longer, she said. Yes, but how can we? We've all got our parents to go home to. And friends, said Rashid, a long way from here. And a lot of journey still to make, said Gus. It was at that moment that Rashid noticed a ruined cabin at the end of the beach. <gasps> Look! With all those planks we could build another boat. A much, much bigger one. And I know what, said Eloise's granny. I can stitch together all my old dresses, my curtains and my handkerchiefs. And you'll have the most beautiful sails in the world. And so... One bright morning, when Simona was able to fly again, there was an amazing new sailing boat in the sky. And what happened after that? You will just have to imagine. And there they go. Oh, I love that story. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget. Send me your stories, send me your pictures, and I'd love to show them. Have a lovely, lovely night, and so much love. Join me again on Stories with Rosie. Bye-bye.